Thank you very much, Harriet uh, Green, for being with us uh, today. What a wonderful experience and such an honor to have uh, a, a legendary leader like yourself and a phenomenal woman that I personally respect so much uh, today at uh, Speakin. Testing times, Harriet, you've been uh, named as Fortune's one of the most powerful women internationally. Uh, you are an OBE and have led IBM as a CEO and chairman for Asia Pacific which is a phenomenal feat in itself. Um, you are an experienced non-executive director for business, government and non-profit organizations and currently sit on the board of Singapore's Economic Development Board, that's the EDB. If you were leading, you, you've operated in this region for so long. I mean, you've addressed hundreds and thousands of people in one go, as we were talking about earlier today. Uh, Harriet, if you were currently leading a medium-sized business here in India, what would you be thinking as a CEO? What is your immediate plan of action? Yeah, so I think it is very different, Deepshika, between small businesses around the globe who I think are struggling enormously here within my own family, very small businesses, it's a very different set of responses to medium and large businesses. But I think uh, there are a couple of kind of major pieces. The, the, the first piece is around the sort of the psychology. Uh, the hearts and minds, not only of our people, those who work with us, but also our clients. How are we reaching out? How are we connecting? How are we helping? How are we sharing? How are we thinking about this sense of belonging? Uh, as my blog this morning, The Outsider, are we insiders or outsiders? Mm. I think so many of us feel outside of our normal comfort zones, of our normal kind of business construct. So I think the first port of call for me uh, as I say, it is slightly different in small, medium and very large businesses mm. is around the people that work for us. Mm. How are they think, feeling and doing? Mm. And then, of course, our clients. And even if we're not able to reach our clients at this stage, mm. everything that we do, how we market ourselves, how we communicate, how we use social media is mm. leaving an impression that as we get through this will be so critical. So I think there's the psychological, the human touch. It is critical for all of us to be even more human at this time. And there are some great examples of that around the world in government, uh, in business and some pretty appalling ones as many write to me and share their opinions. I think the second piece is around the sort of physiology the processes, mm. the approaches, the nerve endings, the blood flows. Mm. And of course, this is where very significant changes have really needed to happen to ensure that working from home can be secure, uh, that, you know, state, world, company secrets, the security of data in the cloud uh, and the cognitive era is so, so important. So how do we ensure our clients' data, our people's data, uh, in the new approaches that we're taking? How do we package up our information and our learning? Because this is an amazing time to help our clients learn. The big uh, second positive is we have some extra time. And so, uh, as I said at the end of my blog today, using that precious time so, effectively, whatever that may be, reading, learning, listening to someone else, helping someone else, these, these physiological connections made easier through digital and technology can be as small as the way your communications to your employees are packaged, right the way through to clever social media and marketing of new and existing products so that clients, you know, remember you uh, 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 in, in the months uh, to come. And then I think perhaps the most important element, and this is one of the hardest for business, 
particularly large and medium businesses. Smaller businesses are often better at it, though their challenges are very, very real right now. As some of you know, the various governments around the world, are their actions really working? But, you know, it's about our anatomy, our structure. Uh, and I think this is such an important time uh, to be so much more soft shell. Uh, you know, that we need to be more um, agile, more adaptable. You know, sometimes it was a good idea at 10 a.m. and by 4 p.m. this ain't gonna work. Or maybe it was a fantastic idea at midday, but in light of new guidelines, we have to do something different. So I think agility, uh, thinking and acting very quickly uh, and being more soft shell crab than hard shell crab. Apologies for those not uh, thinking about crabs at this time, I think is very important. So psychologically, physiologically, and then anatomically, we need to think as small, medium, and large businesses about all of these elements. Does that make sense, did you call Fantastic, fantastic inputs. Let me just ask a leading question there, Harriet. I mean, we, you, you, agility, of course, I think is, uh, as you said, the, an, the anatomic changes or anatomic requirements right now are massive, massive. What, how do you take as a leader, how do you, because you know, the agility that we are seeing, the reaction time is so short that even as a leader, while you are coming to terms with it and while you are getting the board together and telling them and signing off and maybe signing off on a WhatsApp, how do you take the team together? How do you explain and re-explain to them that, okay, I was thinking something else around lunch and it's evening. No, this, your job description now changes. So yeah. how do you deal with that? I think it's a great question. And I think it's what many are struggling with. And I think that the first piece of advice Perhaps even more important for large companies, I'm seeing some of the small businesses around me or those that are connecting with me doing this really, really well, is first of all, instead of thinking of oneself as a leader at the top of some mighty pyramid, uh, you know, and, and all of these structures and orders that, that go around that, I think it is very important that we as leaders are beginning to think of ourselves at the center of this vortex. And at the center of a vortex, you can't wait for all the information to get to you from all your super lieutenants. Uh, you can't wait, you know, for it to trickle down in a hierarchical sense. I think the first point is a mindset, a mindset about being at the center of a vortex. That means you gather information, you quickly bring your teams together, mm. you discuss it, mm. uh, you can very, get the very best from government or business advisors or whatever it, it, it may be. Uh, and, and then say, well, you know, we're going to do this until such time as uh, we, we, we know something different. I don't think it needs to be knee jerk, but it certainly needs to be in this construct of being at the center of a vortex. I think the second thing that is so important at this time, our clients, our customers, our people, uh, just like our families, they need a bit of real heart and authenticity. And it's okay to say, um, I'm, I'm not sure myself, you know, I, I, I think this is the best thing to be doing. I don't want to, you know, I think the key thing for leadership right now is not over calling things or under calling things. It's trying to find with the information that you have at any moment in time to, to chart that, that line of doing, you know, enough. Uh, uh, and so I think this sense of being real, being authentic, being honest, saying, you know, I am a little vulnerable right now. I, I'm not sure myself. However, based on all of your inputs, based on what we know, let's do this together and see where it gets us. Let's, you know, come back in an hour or two hours. I think we're having to see the days in divisions of half hours and hours, and not in weeks and months and quarters.
that's wonderful now have if i take a, 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 a take us take a step down we've talked about the large organizations the medium the smallish now let's talk about you you know you've seen a lot of these in the edb uh, uh, side of your portfolio uh, startups a lot of companies are uh, of course you know for startups it's a very startling uh, time there is a trade off also happening between now in terms of top line and bottom line what would you prefer assuming that there is business there is some some amount of business that you are able to generate what is the what should be the trade off right now <clears throat> well i think sadly around the globe right now the trade off is survival you know and how we ensure that the government's actions uh um uh enable companies with great ideas and great teams of people to survive uh uh many of the uh, positionings and the posturings and the help you know are are requiring people to take on so much personal debt and i think this is a huge challenge across many of the countries that i hope are listening in today so number one is survival uh and trying to you know um keep being creative uh whilst businesses survive mm. uh and keep the morale and the and the entrepreneurial spirit which is so critical around the globe alive and not bogged down with debt with legislation that you know only benefits companies 6 months down the line when they've done 22 weeks of paperwork that is not uh going to um, ensure uh, that survive you know that that companies survive so i think in sh- if if we can get past survival uh i think that you know um uh, often necessity is the mother of invention and i'm hearing and many people are writing to me saying that you know imagining every part of our business as an online entity you know what does that do to commercial property what does that do to the way that we've worked and so you know the necessity as the mother of invention <clears throat> packaging up different ways of project management of you know meditation online of you know people coming together in effective very secure ways uh i think but right now for many many around the globe not only their personal survival in certain parts of the world people actually having enough to eat mm-hmm. and being able to take care of each other mm-hmm. uh, um <clears throat> but then also uh keeping these businesses If, if at least frozen so that when we come out of this they can restart mm. and then beginning to think about new business models new approaches new products and services that are entirely uh, of age online i think that's the mantra using cloud using the early elements of ai i've had some lovely notes this week from people who are taking the early steps in machine learning learning about how to use data and organize their data this is a wonderful time to sort of enter the new age with some extra time but first of all businesses have to survive that's my worry right now